Welcome everybody back to another episode of Ricker and Bond. This is Ricker. <laughs> this is Bond. It's brand spanking new. Today we're talking about Apple announcing a brand new school of products, including new phones. Did they? No, they didn't mention iPads. New AirPods and other stuff. OpenAI is unveiling a new, a brand new model called Strawberry. They say it has better reasoning skills. We're going to be the judges of that. Taylor Swift hopping on the Kamala train. Trump at the debate versus the Dems. And then at the end, we're going to have some down and dirty numbers on a new crypto ETF from Galaxy and State Street. What's going on, dude? What's going on with Apple, you think? Oh, man. Um, oh, gosh, this is one of the... Yeah. I, I sent you a text. I don't... And you didn't respond yeah. because you don't like me or because obviously you're trying to wait to pod for content. Uh, but I saw in comments as well. Is... Yes. The Apple brand sentiment from the people stagnating. Um, first of all, uh, sorry to respond to your text. Uh, <laughs> I worked 117 hours last week. I don't know if you could see it in my eyes. <laughs> no, you look great. And in the 100 degree sun. That's why um, I was kind of like, yeah. literally the hottest stretch of time in the last three years in California. Horrible. <laughs> Would not recommend would not recommend really bad um, recipe for that really bad experience um <laughs> don't know how i'm not sick i still i feel kind of sick <laughs> probably because of the heat <laughs> coughing up dust still fucking for anybody wondering i was setting up stages for an r&b festival in los angeles that was also a hip-hop festival the next day and i also ran or broadcast directed it, but that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to run the cameras and call the shots on the, the screen, the LED walls, but they had me building shit. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I was like, all right, more money. That's fine. Wild. But I didn't know it would be that much work. It's literally construction. Yeah. It's fucking, Which is yeah, kind of wild where you're like, hey, can you also do, no, that's like an entire like industry. <laughs> bro, I'm about to charge them up the ass. Um, and I like, that was fine. Like, I, I kind of knew, like, like building it was, like, whatever. Like, I built stages before. But, like, I didn't know that, like, I would also have to strike, meaning we would have to tear down the stage. And we would have to do it fast, like, in a day. And it took, like, four or five days to build this thing. And that fucking sucked ass, bro. Like, <laughs> I fucking worked. On the day of the hip-hop festival, I think I got in at 9 a.m. And I left at 3 a.m. So that's, like, 15, 16 hours. Then they expected me to come back the next day. So I came at like 2 p.m., already tired as fuck. And then I left that day, the next day at 4 a.m. Yeah, but what and does then all the days... think about uh, the, the Palestine-Israel conflict, though? Bro, fuck them. Let's talk about me. I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But um, no, nah, horrible, horrible, horrible. Trying to get out of that. Um, Yeah. Income's nice, man. Cop a little bread. Income's yeah, dude, I fucking, yeah, not for long, not for long, I will be there, hopefully. Nice. So, okay, so yeah, um, Apple sentiment. Yeah, I couldn't even touch my phone because my fucking hands <laughs> were so dirty. So I was like, I'm not, I can't even respond to this. You're good. Um, Is the Apple brand plummeting in sentiment via the masses? You I mean think... sentiment as in like excitement? Yeah. I feel a big old. Uh, I think so. I think, I think, yeah, well, definitely. Well, first of all, everybody's copying their keynotes. So like what they're doing isn't like necessarily special. Like Apple used to be the king of keynotes. Also a sign of plateauing slash needing to do something. Yeah. And having one. And I don't, do they have one every quarter, bro? They have to tell you like when Jim, the engineer, moved a button. It's way too many keynotes. They got to dip. They got to go out of sight. They only do a they only do two key, they only do two keynotes a year, I think. Too many, dude. Um because most of the stuff now they used to do more. Like when they release a new iPad now, it's just a press release. Hmm. Um okay. But I think when they went to they started this a couple of years ago. Um I don't know if you remember when they transitioned to being like a live production on stage to like pre-recording everything uh, and just playing it on the stream. 
Mm. I think when they did that, like, even though it seems like they put in more effort, it kind of seems like less special. Sure. The old, uh, you know, rem- remotely. And there's no live audience anymore, but like at Apple campus, I know everybody like takes the day off and like watches it on the campus. You know, who did do a keynote oh. with a, a bunch of people is NVIDIA. Yeah. NVIDIA does it. Google does it. Everybody still does it except for Apple. Apple's like, Fuck that. Just, you know, I'm sure you know we're a little bit younger, but Apple is like the keynote company in our eyes. I know Microsoft had its end uh, developers meme, but it's a tad bit before my consciousness. But, yeah, but I I will say I I do think the sentiment has dropped off in terms of like because the phones are really good, but they're like so good that the progress is incremental. It is commoditized a bit now. Yeah. Um, but like the Apple intelligence stuff, I think feature wise, that's the biggest leap for an iPhone in a while. Like just talking about what they could do. Yeah. Hey, Siri, send my pictures that I took in San Diego at this bar to Ricker. Like that's fucking crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Siri, don't actually do that because <laughs> I don't have iOS 16. But um, no, I can't wait to try that. Um, that like stuff, I, that stuff should have been a thing like a decade ago. Well, they could only do that now because like AI is getting like finally good mm-hmm. because all this like well, actually, most of the stuff that they're showing they were showing is like actual Apple intelligence. But then, if you ask, it's something that. Apple intelligence can't do it'll fucking kick it off to open AI or yeah. Gemini I think um, well, they, they kind of I, I I said this last episode but do they have small like localized Apple intelligence stuff and then bigger stuff they kind of outsource inside of their phone to the other people yeah and apparently like most of it is on device too so it doesn't get sent up to Apple servers which Google never will never do that cool like google needs that info um but yeah i wasn't gonna get another the next iphone because i have the 13 now and it's fine but until like they showed that shit and they're like oh some of it only works on this because of this chip or whatever which is probably it could probably work on the 15 but um i don't know i i might grab it because this phone is getting old there was talks that but if people uh, upcycled the, to a new phone, the Apple intelligence is free on it. Well, yeah, I believe Apple intelligence is free anyway, right? Well, I know ChatGPT or OpenAI Plus or whatever is free. I think they said for a year or something. I also said like this on the phone. Um, as someone who's, I, I subscribe for OpenAI's like up upcycled tiers um upcharge tiers and same one i don't see a scenario where i downgrade again to save 15 or 20 bucks a month just like i probably wouldn't downgrade for a lot of apple subscription stuff i I, I downgraded and i came back in a couple of days because what tell me why um can't on the app you can't use the camera which is huge i take pictures of stuff and i ask questions about the world i never do that Uh, i upload that's fucking you got to use that i was fucking in cvs and i took a picture of some medicine i was like yo i took this other medicine today is this gonna kill me and it was like nah dude you're chilling don't even fucking worry about it the the label the snap meta glasses do a lot of in real in in real world stuff for like blind people i commercial i have that too those are we should talk about those those, sure. those are a good product sure. um and the second thing i use it for chat gpt plus is um dragging files into chat gpt yeah. is super helpful you know that with screenshots and files yeah no nah, i think downgrading is only text and they limit the amount of messages you can send a day one i think there's a bit of fomo of like oh i could be getting a better answer here when you ask something Mm-hmm. Two, it could be placebo, which is hilarious. But when you do something with a lower model, it kind of seems like less good 
than higher models. Yeah. And also, too, I know this is just a psychological thing because I'm sure it, like, has the answer at the same time, the free one and the paid one. But the free one types it out fast. I mean, the, the paid yep. one types it out faster. Yep, yep, yep. That's for sure. For sure design. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. fucking, I think Claude, I think Claude just appears or something. And that's kind of weird to me. Or yeah. one of them just appears. I forgot which one does. I kind of, because I know it has the answer, but I want it to like type it out. Like it's yeah. Like it's a person. Yeah, almost. yeah, yeah. That's funny. That will probably be seen people trying to get the best feature for that when they go for audio and, and video and eventually some agents. Uh, but yeah, if you go on Reddit, I don't know if you've been on the OpenAI Reddit, people are pissed because um, the last keynote, they, what was the model? Was it GPT-4.0? I think it was supposed to come out with GPT-4.0, which is apparently like super good. Like, I think it's good. Um but it's supposed to be multimodal, meaning that you can talk to it while it's using the camera, while it's listening at the same time. So it's like you're talking to a person. And that was announced like six months ago, and it still isn't out. Um, yeah, the model is 4.0. I would love which to sucks. and listen. You know, it's it's kind of like the iPhone features, how they roll stuff out. Where like, you could obviously do a lot of stuff, and everybody <laughs> is thinking to themselves i would really love to do this feature and it's pretty simple and they roll it out and it's a pretty simple thing you know the meme of like android users being stoked to see a keynote that for a unveil of a feature that's been on android for 20 years kind of like that, yeah where i would love to listen and, and read the text at the same time when i'm on my phone on chat which they can for sure do but they'll roll it out like a apple camera feature yeah we definitely just like jumped over all the apple stuff we were going to talk about but we can come back to it but right now we're talking about real quick open ai releasing oh one its first model with reason and capabilities also called strawberry and it's already i'm like in the app right now and there's oh one preview oh one mini and yeah those are the things um so i use I use ChatGPT or I use the OpenAI API for coding primarily. And in the software I use, you can choose between Claude or ChatGPT and or OpenAI. And when I ask a coding question, I like to compare like which ones. And because sometimes like one is just way off and sometimes the other one gets it. And it's about like, I would say I use OpenAI 70% of the time. So mm -hmm. if they integrate oh one into the software i use i would be interested to see how well it performs okay. apparently llama facebook llama is better than all of them word Did on the street for uh meta in instagram messages no i just use the fucking straight up uh website llama website and i put like coding shit in there and like it's better with its answers, but like you can't like do certain things that ChatGPT lets you do, like pulling whole files or pictures or shit. Instagram uses Llama three point one for their meta AI in Instagram. Yeah, fucking Mark is going crazy with Llama. He's and then putting all the money in it. There's a few times, uh, you know, Google's collab, um, desktop coding cloud type deal yes they had was that google or microsoft google collab google collab um so like collab.research.google.com i might just be on the doc site um oh yeah but you like use their computing power for for whatever power you would usually use on whatever servers but they have a, a gemini integration so a very, 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 very novice person can enter a prompt into Gemini and get some usable code, I assume, back to uh, <laughs> make one box on a website. And then you can ask it things and, and plug in uh, errors it had. So I found that super, super usable. Um, I'm not sure. How much do you use Google less now that ChatGPT is out? A significant amount. I would Definitely. say 
between anywhere 25 to 50 percent yeah I've, I've said this probably before but i've never gotten more value from a digital product than chat gpt if it were 50 bucks a month i'd probably still pay for it 50 uh... <laughs> if it were 50 if it were 50 and there were no free version i would pay for it sure the free version is going to get them eventually well it's probably good yeah i don't premium where it's like yeah people will use it and then they you know all the fomo and, and upgrading features that they try to nudge toward you that we just talked about we'll get them i'd love to see the, the data, stats dude. between like i'm sure has anybody talk, <laughs> talked about all the data on the back end of this of how they're just gonna screw everybody uh the free version is gonna screw everybody the data i'm sure I'll, i mean if it's like a funnel into the paid version like i i would like to see like how many free versions free people actually convert to paid if that is plateaued you know because I'm saying, i think i read somewhere that like chat gpt adoption as a whole has like slowed down a shit ton yeah i mean it followed the nvidia stock chart which means it was super hyperbolic uh hyperbolic. How, how is that stock doing i heard it's, it's fine. doing poor it went straight up for like nine months bro give it a break uh but it is yeah i was uh but everything is red right now uh yeah they had expectations are a a bz dude when uh <laughs> you do super well but everybody who touches analyzing stocks wants you to do better and expects you to do better people react on expectations and not on results just a fun thing um, yeah so nvidia would need to literally take over another industry that's not ai in order to justify this valuation what's it at right now 2.92 trillion they also are the AI industry basically. There's like two others, but top. But five. yeah, but like so my my thing is this, which like worries me. I'm not an NVIDIA shareholder, so I'm not that worried. I don't like really care where the stock goes. But you know, like they have all these customers, they make this money from Amazon and Facebook and Microsoft and Google paying them, and maybe Apple. But these guys can just make their own. And I know they are, especially Facebook. Like Facebook doesn't like to share or Meta doesn't like to share for long. Mm -hmm. And Mark Zuckerberg is ruthless. So like once those other companies get the hardware down and start making their own chips, like well, isn't what's NVIDIA going to do? Like nobody has deep pockets like these companies. Yeah. I was trying to find um, Revenue for NVIDIA. Um, we'll see. We can do a deeper dive yeah. on another episode of NVIDIA's revenue and stock. And also, we talked about this last time. Like, it doesn't matter how much money NVIDIA makes. If, like, AI as a whole doesn't make money, then it's just, like, digging a hole, you know? Yeah. It might come from a bunch of industries cutting a bunch of fat and labor and then replacing that with nvidia <laughs> it could be but what if that just what if like it just makes people fucking hire more and push them harder so instead of 10xing you're 60xing possibly um it depends on depends on what people really want to do and how good but boy oh boy i'm sure that a lot of people could be fired. And just I want to know how, like, the uh, percentage of, like, how much of this compute is being used to generate AI porn and how much is it used to, like, trying to solve cancer. Yeah. The old internet for porn versus internet for a good purpose in life. It's crazy, um, dude. Product line for NVIDIA revenue sources. Data center processors for analytics and AI. GPUs for computers, GPUs for e-visualization, GPUs for automotive, which is interesting, and GPUs for crypto. Um, there's a, a large line going up and to the right for data centers. 
uh, in 2019 is 25% of their revenue, while GPUs was 53%. And in 2024, data centers was 78% of NVIDIA's revenue. So people probably pricing in people building more data centers. Maybe it's more onshoring in the US. Um, um, I, th I feel like I read a crazy stat recently about Amazon spending a shit ton on data centers. Yeah. We can also, or no, was it Microsoft? We can also go more into that because I, it might have been, there might have been a, a race for people to build and then it just wasn't sustainable. It kind of slowed down. But data centers, next episode. Um, Microsoft so, and OpenAI, 100 billion AI data center. They're planning. It's on the next episode. Yeah, a little tease. It's probably going to go back to the median of, maybe it won't, but <clears throat> as all things uh, tend to revert to the mean, GPUs for computers will probably go back to somewhere closer to 50%, and data centers will probably go down from 78%. I mean, from 2019, their top three revenue sources was data centers and GPUs. Data center was 25%, GPUs was 53%. Five years later, data center seventy eight percent, GPUs is seventeen percent. So, there's some there's probably a correction in revenues that will come from that. We'll dive deep. Damn. We'll dive deep. Um, data centers for Nvidia, and then a little bit of a Nvidia revenue source deep dive. It'll be fun. It'll be so much fun. And I you have an art you oh I guess that's fine I thought Otterbox was like that big thick ass battery looking case yeah no I tried to get this one off and it didn't really work and so probably won't take it off until I get a new phone but it's getting a little dirty inside what phone um, is that the case or the phone yeah the phone it's the phone the, the biggest and bestest one fifteen pro max wow wow hey, 15 pro max big daddy over here. my my upgrade cycle is i think uh contrary to popular belief the most common upgrade cycle for people to do phones is about five years which is the five years about when i get a new phone ski when the battery just gets absolutely reprehensibly non-usable yeah, I'm at three years on average now. I used to just be that every year boy, but why just nah, too lazy, bro? It's like it's just, I don't know. Actually, maybe maybe it's just because I'm not like a kid anymore, so it doesn't excite me as much. Or is it less exciting? It could be that. Well, yeah. I mean, like the three g s to the four was a huge leap the four s to the five was a huge leap the five s to the six was a huge leap the six to the eight was a huge leap i think the way they went back to fucking was that the all wrap around it's kind of like shiny glass back but i don't know um yeah now it's like and just the law getting more powerful yeah but but that's that's never been <laughs> that's never been the selling case for iPhones, really. Yeah, but I mean, like, even though, like, it's that's interesting because even though they have the iPhone upgrade program where you can literally just get a new phone every year, like, easy as fuck. Like, people, 
feel like a lot of people don't use that. Don't you still have to pay? Yeah, you still have to pay, but it's like you're still paying for you're just paying every month. It's like you're renting. It's like a, a lease on a farm, pretty much. Uh, I would also be interested in seeing how many people do that service. Yeah. Um, but as I say, is it gets getting less exciting if my feeling on Apple sentiment is correct and people are kind of plateauing on their sentiment. Uh, they're going to need to do other stuff, just like NVIDIA needs to do other stuff. And Apple has been murmuring around healthcare for a, a little bit of a minute, and they just got an FDA approval for a hearing aid. Round of applause, round of applause. Hearing aids, everybody. Is that integrated into AirPods? You going to cop one, dude? Yeah, because my AirPods now suck. <laughs> Bro, never buy fucking renewed AirPods on. They're renewed for a reason. Someone return that shit because it didn't work. <laughs> Just maybe pay the extra Chase. fifty bucks. Oh man, uh -huh. Chase. I, a lot of the times I get my Apple products through Chase, and they're uh -huh. and uh, it was the first time, basically ever, I had to to hit up my my text message and text A P P L E. And say, hey, your guys' product didn't work when I opened it. That plus one time, two things have been happening with my MacBook. One time it ran out of battery and I didn't open it for a long, pretty long time. And my internal um, date and time got like stopped and it wasn't working. And that kind of ruins whatever processing that it needs with time. It ruins the whole computer. Yeah. So, and it wouldn't connect to the internet because of that. So I did something and somehow got to uh, the update it via internet thing. But I mean, that was a pretty big boo-boo of, I mean, I guess the battery's dead and hadn't been turned on for a while, but come on. And then another one was when I'm opening a new tab and I'm searching something, there's been random times where it says, uh, can't open a page, your storage full. My storage isn't full. Maybe it was my cache. I deleted cache, went back, randomly pops up again. Cache was like just deleted. And I was having a whole big convo with their Apple support text, which is a nice feature. And they are pretty fun to do 24-7. But their exact words uh, were, I'm a logical person, comma, and this defies logic. I said, you're preaching in the choir, buddy. Anyways, so sentiment kind of waning. Me experiencing <laughs> Apple product deficiencies for the first time ever. Uh, might as well just take all your health data and sell you all the stuff that you want to do. Like hearing something in your second generation AirPods. The uh, AirPods are Apple's best product, probably. Yeah, they also, I think, outpace revenue for everything ever in other businesses fucking airpods as soon as you can fucking as soon as they can translate language in real time yeah in the person's voice Ooh. in real time that will be bro you already see the product bro, come on i do in the voice and the voice stuff it's like you'll never need to learn another language you just go on your phone type english only always and boom so apple received an fda authorization under FDA's de novo classification, which is intended for <laughs> bubble to low to moderate risk devices uh, for the second generation AirPods as hearing aids. FDA describes Apple's solution as the first ever over-the-counter hearing aid software device. They tested a bunch of people, 118 people, between Apple's self-fitting strategy and professional fitting. Uh, Apple AirPods Pro will gain a hearing protection mode to safeguard ears in loud environments like under the concerts, concerts. LA. Wow, I use those as ear things. Yeah, during the concert, they were effortlessly cutting off thirty decibels because I had the decibel test, and it told me how loud it was. I was hearing it, and how loud it was without the AirPods, and it was crazy. If it's somehow worse for your ears using an AirPod, AirPod for that versus like an earplug, I guess I don't know. Earplug versus AirPod. Earplug sounds pretty uh, barbaric, but 
by the way, hearing aids are over a thousand dollars. I'm looking at them right now. Oh, big market. Everybody, <laughs> big market. Yeah. So, uh, so if you're deaf, uh, pick up a pair of pros too. And wild, wild. Now, on the topic of AirPods, it's not all fun in the sun. Um, AirPods Max uh, has a refresh as well after not having a refresh for years. And the only thing they changed were uh, the port is now USB-C and there's a couple colors. As far as I can tell, and I looked into it a little bit, there's no technical changes to this product. No better noise canceling, no bigger battery. No better base, no better chip. It still is the same chip, the H1 chip, as the old one. What the fuck, Apple? You've had like four years to do something. Expectations are a killer in the stock market and for business, man. How are the small AirPods? How do they have better noise canceling than the big AirPods? These are over (laughs) here. That doesn't make sense. They'll probably, you know, as they do come out with something, but... Like not said, only that, these are heavy as fuck. Bro. <laughs> like they couldn't make it a little lighter, like like smaller or something. These are so fucking heavy. Same thing with OpenAI. Everybody says, "Hey, can you do this simple thing? It'd be really great." And they pop it out every three to five years, and everybody's rejoicing in their in their little bitty. Underpants. Oh, I I I don't think any of this is simple by any means. Um, like but when it, when a consumer thinks about it, it's kind of simple. Or yeah. at least warranted. Should I say when a consumer, a mass amount of people in their heads are thinking about a feature for a product, it is then expected. You know what's crazy is that Apple can figure out a way to take like multiple cameras looking out at the world, mold it into one fucking image, and Christ. Play that on a screen in your eyes in real time and then overlay graphical data and at the same time interacting with your hands in real time, put that on the market and have people buy it and use it and get value from it. But they can't figure out how to make a fucking one pad that charges your phone and your AirPods <laughs> and your watch at the same time. Some of the most complex things for AI to do is something that a, a toddler can do. Very complex things that seem simple. I was listening to a podcast and this guy was saying um, that the air, the fucking, what's it fucking called? Vision Pro would not have been possible without fucking AI doing a lot of the computational things needed in order for to make that VR work. Mm-hmm. So AI is just like always just running in the background, just thinking, like just trying to make a bunch of flat images look like you're in it a lot, of, a lot of chips it's crazy and he was like yeah it's fucking it's nuts that they are able to put all that fucking mass computer mass on your head and people are comparing it to like a ps5 where the ps5 could be 50 pounds and no one will give a shit because it's always <laughs> sitting on the floor I, and so it has that advantage i am a product of a samsung x microsoft uh, product which is cloud xbox it's a cloud xbox it is gaming via sam on a samsung tv in the cloud which lately has been a horrible user experience very laggy can't play a game either online or not online but well, you need an xbox for it or just a samsung tv subscription in a samsung tv yeah i can't imagine that'll be very good fucking google tried to do something like fine. that was usable and then it wasn't usable i'm sure wi-fi might have something to do with it but are the graphics good no (laughs) (laughs) but i don't have a a, a, i don't have a i don't have a console pretty cool that's cool i fucking i was so impressed with fucking uh call of duty mobile i bought a ps5 did i talk to you about that which call of duty mobile yeah I I I I don't think I have ever talked to you about that. But which which Call of Duty? Mo- there was two things. There's a Warzone mobile and a Call not of- Warzone, not Warzone. Both amazing experiences. Warzone, I play. I played Call of Duty a lot in like 2021 on the mobile. Blue uh-huh. I think we actually might have played it on 20 at 25th Street. But Probably it, an amazing experience, dude. 
It was, yeah, I'm like, especially on the, I, I don't have an iPad, but my home is an iPod Pro. I'm like, bro, this is, how is yeah. it this good on a fucking right. tablet? I upgraded to a big ass display on the Max. Whew. Might as well have a, I might as well have been a full screen TV. But yeah. A crazy like, can, can, can you believe this is iOS? You can dive in. It's just, it was one to one. You're playing COD. Once your brain gets over whatever it needs to get over, you're, you're playing a game. Yeah. Uh, did you use a controller or were you like touching the screen? Touching the screen. Cause yeah, I can't do that anymore. It sucks. Up and stuff. I fucking, I was for a while, I would, I had like a, I just bought a PS5 controller. I was like, yeah. fuck it. And I plugged it into my computer screen, HDMI. Yeah. I was playing that way. And I was like, all right, fun. fuck it. I want to play Spider-Man. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me let me talk about this State Street Galaxy, these crypto ETFs, real quick. Um, yeah, a, a, a little a little medicine in everybody's pudding. We can get to Taylor Swift and and Trump after, but T Swift, just some fun stuff. So, new crypto ETF uh, brought to you by the good people at State Street and Galaxy. Uh, State Street is the third biggest ETF provider provide behind. BlackRock and um, Vanguard, I believe it was. Am I correct? Yeah. Um, I think so. So, three ETFs. Um, before that, yeah. Uh, three ETFs, all trying to give some liquidity to some, some crypto-related stuff. One is called Heco, one is called Deco, one is called Tech X. So um, State Street uh, is the people that bring you such ETFs as the SPY, which uh, has $500 billion in assets. Um, and then all the rest of their stuff, they have like $1.21 trillion assets under management. Uh, partnered with Galaxy. Do these assets. ETFs, yep. what, do they, what do they hold? Uh, they represent these crypto ones yes I tell you dude uh one is the spider galaxy digital asset ecosystem etf which is targeting companies benefiting from blockchain and crypto adoption as well as some direct exposure to the digital assets through etfs and futures so holding companies futures and etfs with digital assets in it ETFs have more freaking, there's more ETFs in stocks than, than there are on the market. So freaking go crazy with all that. Um, so first one is companies that have something to do with blockchain and then a bit of direct exposure via ETFs and I think possibly spot as well. Uh, that was Heco. Second is Deco, which is a hedged digital asset ecosystem, which is the same thing. So companies, ETFs, and direct digital assets, but with a couple options on it to manage some volatility. Third is Galaxy Transformative Tech Accelerators, which is um, just infrastructure for blockchain tech. Um, so three ETFs, I don't know. I think they might be on the market already, but just kind of for some comparisons for other numbers. Spot Bitcoin ETFs pulled in 17 billion since January. Uh, so yeah. none of them are holding Doge? I... Or Sheep? No. Let me see if they got some holdings on there. Um, then I will not be investing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was... Um, so the... Some inflows. So VOO, everybody's favorite Vanguard fund. Year to date, net net flows, so inflow and outflow is sixty one billion. Am I correct with the billion? Yes. And then the biggest spot uh, ETF, iBit, which is daily short digitizing the economy. I don't know if that's shorting crypto stuff, but is somewhat crypto related and it has twenty billion, twenty point nine billion in net flow, so pretty substantially under some traditional favored. ETFs, but got some freaking flows. Um, as far as holdings inside of these bad boys, what does State Street show me? 
Holdings. This is in Heco. We got a lot of companies. Pretty evenly weighted. Um, highest is 6.95%, and then it goes down to 5.9, 5.09. Terra Wolf. Everybody knows Terra Wolf. Everybody loves Terra Wolf. Am I right? Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, apparently, Terra Wolf is a zero carbon Bitcoin mining company. Uh, that is public, ah. and it has just a horrendous chart. What mm. the I've ever seen. It really went big up in 2021, which is crypto bubble. Uh, that's their biggest holding. They got some Taiwan Semi Core Scientific, which I believe is mining as well. Yeah, uh, they also, I'm assuming, have a horrible, horrible chart. Oh, not that bad. It's ten bucks, but it's uh, hanging in there on the price. It did freaking IPO in January, three bucks to ten. Interesting. Not bad. Micron's in there. ProShares, Bitcoin, Shippled. Strategy ETF, which is funny. ETF and an ETF, dude. It's like a clown car. Uh, yeah. They got Meta. They got CME. So it's like freaking mining companies, chip companies, uh, trading platforms, and then Mastercard probably has some freaking bitcoin somewhere in there um trying to see if they have any <coughs> bitcoin but just new etfs which uh you know has crypto bubbled and went away it's uh, pretty interesting to see happen got some options on these bad boys oh let's see what their options are dude a little bit into the weeks micron october 24 70 put you gotta put that's for volatility yeah. Uh, 2% weighted, got some Robin Hood in there, Intel, get wrecked, block, get wrecked. Robin Hood. This is a portfolio of companies I personally would not invest in, but they got some good stuff. Six yeah, point, put all your money in sheep. <laughs> six point highest weighting is just a horribly, horribly charting stock, but anyway, just a little freaking numbers to, uh, pill in your pudding that I thought were interesting for some new spider galaxy assets crypto etfs anyways taylor swift cat lady dude what's going on with that dude what's going on she's freaking she's freaking democrat dude what the heck oh no (laughs) way dude that's what i would have never guessed taylor swift supports the female nominee well, Amber Rose supported. Oh, him, good know. point. Get, get wrecked, dude. Get wrecked. Good point. How sexist of me to assume <laughs> that Taylor a, Swift. She's a bit more, you know, she got a tattoo on her face. You know, Republicans love tattoos. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> how, <laughs> how, how idiotic of me <laughs> Taylor Swift would not support Donald Trump. They've, they've always said Republican Party is the tattooed party, dude. Bruh, how? Okay. How many, like, realistically, how many, you, you see a Taylor Swift concert, all white girls, 100% white girls, how many of them do you think are actually Trumpers? It has to be higher than we think, right? I saw one clip of a lady who uh, was real mad at Miss Swift, and she was burning burning her posters right in the street, dude. Which is I like, feel like if Taylor Swift came out. Thing, dude, politics is, everybody, you're yeah, that's, literally that's objectively weirdo. If you do that, you're an objective weirdo. If Taylor Swift came out and said, "Hey, Trump's my guy," <laughs> I feel like like most of her, a lot of her fans would be like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, uh, the guy. Uh, I, I would, I would like, love to see. A, you got it. You're a leader. <laughs> if there was a kind of uh, comparable tour dates from like before and after, so not like a, a plunge in tour dates, but. A comparable amount of dates. I would love to see uh, the the revenue for that. A lot of people were like, "Whatever, dude." I don't know. It just goes way up. It doubles. <laughs> I mean, you could also do see uh, see stuff for uh, when she started doing the the Kelsey stuff. What kind of revenues popped or or declined uh, in tickets for him? I'm sure he's probably a freaking more on the right side than the left side. 
Probably. I'm sure she knows too, and she's fine with it. Maybe they're just okay with each other, dude. Maybe they're both just like secretly. I don't know. Maybe it's a it's a a a bastion of hope for us all that you cannot be weirdos on two different sides of a political spectrum. Probably not. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy times we're living in. It's just like. Uh, didn't watch the debate, but you know who needs to watch things to have an opinion. Not yeah, to do with the podcast, that's for sure. Uh, I'm not even a citizen. <laughs> I'm in Spain right now. Yeah, Jesus. Sentiment just from uh, clips in you know social media, very different jaw feelings than Trump versus Biden and Trump versus Kamala. Uh, they didn't do a, a crowd for Kamala Trump. Probably because they thought shoot him in the head. But, uh... Oh, I just thought the crowd would, like, affect the debate. And it, it did affect it without it, because he seemed like he kind of sucked without a crowd, dude. She did or he did? He did. And, of course, I only he saw did. more clips, but sentiment. Yeah, he's a fucking... He's the media man. He needs an audience. He needs a circus. He needs... But, he needs um... Did they turn off the mics, though? For what? Like, you know how, like, last time or Doctor and Trump versus Biden, they were talking over each other? Uh, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, I think. I, from what I saw, there was there was not a lot of over-talking. Miss Harris. The would. fact that they even need to do that is crazy. Yeah, man's, uh, man's came in and said, uh, new playbook, dude. I wonder who's going to win. Let's get back to the good old corruption we used to know, huh? Come on. Yeah, we used to be a country. A good old corrupted country, you know, had a little terrorist attack. Everybody was cool with each other, and you know, these all these uh, these mavericks, dude. Oh, saying corruption is bad, and we're gonna do weird stuff. No, dude, let's do all the same old stuff. Like I said, no one gets elected. Let's just keep. Oh, it I want to know. One week of rioting, everybody. Come on, it's a national pastime. Take a week off, a couple of days off, five day weekend, go riot. Come on. Wait, that might be illegal to insist. <laughs> Illicit didn't mean that people in the future. It's art, parody. jokes written by uh, Dane Cook. Bro, Dane, <laughs> I was watching uh, some media and Dane Cook was brought up, and so I I typed in Dane Cook, and he had gone live on YouTube five hours earlier with two K views and like going directly live to YouTube, and it was a, 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 a site for sore eyes. It was not. And a, you gave him your password. I gave him my password. He said, "Hey." Uh, give me your 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 uh, your key for crypto. I said yes, yes, Dane Cook. I remember you used to be the man back in two thousand eight. Well, I want to you, know it, is how come the weekend thought it would be a good idea to film his music video with an iPhone? Because Apple paid him so much money. I saw that. Could could bring that up. Oh my God, the bag that he must have got. <laughs> oh, and. I understand that it got paid a lot, but I just know there's people out there that are going to argue with me saying, bro, the iPhone is good enough for... It's a phone, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's a fucking phone, I don't bro. care if it could launch a spaceship to the moon and back. Like, get something... <laughs> As I say, dude. something that moves, it can't move with your finger, but... <laughs> I promise you, the camera filming the iPhone filmed the music video I wasn't an iPhone. <laughs> The, the camera taking the drone shot. Yeah, Jesus phone. Christ. Doing the I, I know the weekend you know. was like, yo, no way you're going to fuck <laughs> up my discography. Double the price before you film this shit with an iPhone. Oh, man. Yeah, he probably had to talk about some... Um, uh, he, some multiples on his, on his whole uh, discography that... that hey, if I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have anything iPhone-related filming my work, you better bet that these private equity companies that are going to want to buy my things in 40 years' time are going to pay a pretty premium amount on it. Yeah, they're going to be like, oh, this can't one's wait to, to iPhone. Yeah, some currently 21-year-old kid have some pee for a couple of decades from now buy such sweet, sweet ballads as uh, Kiss Land, and et cetera, et cetera. Bro, I'd be arguing with these kids on Reddit. They think they're the real <laughs> Able fans, but they don't know, bro. I've been here 
a long time. They just discovered him in 2020. Like, Listen to Star like, Dude, I, I work. They'd be out. like, oh, that's not true. And then I pull up a fucking interview from 2012. <laughs> I'm like, here, bitch. Yeah, that's right, little boy. <laughs> I wonder how he has a. I think it's always Billboard he has interviews with, huh? It was like Billboard Brazil. Billboard, Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone. I love his little print. He used to not do anything, but, you know, now he's Mr. Big Shot or return my calls. God, dude. It's very popular now, all of a sudden, acting different. I wonder if he has any secret children. He doesn't even return my text after, like, 30 minutes. I have to wait all day now. I wonder if he's, like, actually a cool guy. I would never want to meet him. I don't think I could handle it. I'd meet him. I a guy. I don't know. Like, what if we just catch him on a bad day? And, it, like, is he, he's a dick and it's nothing to do with you. But now I'm just like, ah. Uh, like my favorite music, and this guy was mean to me. Well, I, I yeah, I can't, I couldn't do it. Uh, Unless I, for some reason I was more famous than him, then I can handle you, it. You, but. You, you, yeah, in in this, in, in, when you meet people, you're on a comparable level. So, uh, if you meet if you meet Abel, it wouldn't be the bond of today. It would be the bond of meeting Abel, which is comparable. Yeah, once I become a famous singer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you might want to go like a comedy or business route. Maybe business route might be the easiest. Uh, yeah. Or something for him. I don't know. You think that's, you think that's easier than comedy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> dude, there is, I saw some st- a stupid clip of just a stupid guy commenting on a, on a Burt Kreischer clip. But this man, you know, Burke Reiser, yeah? Uh-uh. Oh, well, he's a comedian. You know, the class of comedians that all do pods? Oh, yeah, of course. And he's still in L.A. and where everybody else goes to Texas. And he was in Rite Aid and everything was empty. And Rite Aid's bankrupt and going out of business. And he's like, dude, these looters over here have just ransacked this Rite Aid. I'm like, man, L.A., this is L.A. now, huh? And he's like, no, dude, it's lit. you're in a bankrupt business right now. There's nothing... There's nothing on the shelves in where I live. I got a love. I love behind. LA. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's a love poster behind someone and, and the shelves are not stocked, uh, it's probably not looters, dude. It's everybody. You can always have a love poster behind you. And so wait, so I'm sorry. He was in. C, you said he was in Rite Aid and the shelves were empty. Yeah, you've been in Rite Aid in and LA. Empty? Yeah, but what what variety was he at? Did he specify the area? No, probably like a... If he was downtown, that's understandable. No, it was... Well, it, really uh, easy to steal from that one. Actually, first of all, my rare did was empty. That's that's a business bankrupt. That's not looters, I'll tell you that. Oh, you think... You think they just... Anybody do anything at my rare aid, it's me. <laughs> And like, um, also, that like they, they lock up a bunch of shit now, so you gotta like call them for fucking everything, bro. I just want deodorant. Who's stealing <laughs> deodorant, bro? Come on, homeless people. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's San Francisco <laughs> joint where there's signs of like steal stuff below 100 bucks. Like, go, go get, go get raped, dude. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's fucked. Fucking Have people buy stuff and then give it to people. How about that? <laughs> and then... <laughs> The mayor of LA, her house got broken into, and the person didn't even go to jail because of a law that she passed. That's wild. What's the law? Yeah, it was like Karen something of like if you if you steal something, Karen Bass. If you steal something below fucking this amount of money, I forgot the amount. It's a with the breaking and entering misdemeanor. I don't know the specifics, but he didn't go to jail. He just got probation or something. If you like ask and don't be any, and then steal something. Karen Bass, ladies and gentlemen. 70 years old. Yeah, she's pretty old. District of LA, which is probably what? Downtown? Um, I don't know. Oh, it's, literally, it's, it's like literally. It's, 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 it's LA, yeah. It's literally a, like DTLA and Skid Row in the fashion district. <laughs> so, no, she's the fucking mayor of the whole city. This, I think the district of LA that she presides over is is like downtown LA, basically in fashion district. 
Well, so there's different, what are they called? Council members, right? And they have their own districts. Mm -hmm. And she has, she has her own district, but she's in charge of the council members. Ah. Yeah. Like Kevin DeLeon, that racist asshole. Gosh darn it. He got, he's a, uh, he's a, he's a, um, council member council member of LA and he got caught on tape saying some racist shit and <laughs> him and some other council members and they all stepped down and he didn't step down he was just like I'm just gonna <laughs> keep my job and I even mean, bro even Biden was like this guy needs to step down and he still didn't even step down dude I got respected a tiny bit <laughs> bro I'm like dude so didn't he dance on a like video what am I thinking I don't know might have been the same I'm just and now he's fucking trying to win the black vote again because he's winning for re-election because he's trying to rename um, Pershing Square, Alley's First Park, after Biddy Mason, who was a former slave that owned a bunch of land in Los Angeles. Beach? Not the beach guy? Uh, no, it's a, it's a park downtown LA. What is Pershing named after? It's named after a fucking Civil War guy, John <laughs> Pershing. <laughs> Literally has nothing to do with LA. <laughs> ah, so funny. Uh, yeah, so definitely needs He's almost dead. a rename. What's the what was the proposed one? Uh, Biddy Mason Park. B i d d y Mason. Biddy. I mean, Biddy yeah, Park. we could call it the Biddy because they have Biddy Park. Want to go see a show at the Biddy? Hello, Biddy's dog. I haven't said Biddy yeah. in a minute too. I like Biddy. Oh, God. Here we go. Here Don't we go. Back. No, no. Oh, God. That takes me back to a dark place. <laughs> it's also, is this a dude? Because this certainly looks like a female. It's a female. Yeah, yeah. She's a Real female. Estate, huh? What's she buying? Yeah. She got some She's land. they saying? Oh, yeah. LA. Those missionaries be buying up stuff. All right, Biddy. Come on. I went uh, to the church that she founded. As a child, latter day isn't that Mormonism or Jehovah? No, it was Methodist or something. Ah, well, dude, I can't wait to see a concert at Biddy Park. It's gonna be good. Same. He died in eighteen ninety one. I was there. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. I was at the funeral. Uh, Got to go really bad. Uh, Been fun. Ricker, Bond, Ricker and Bond, Apple. Bond. Have a fun day and life. See you next time. See you next time. Love you.